Hey there, everybody. Welcome back. This is 15.3, Conservative Vector Fields and Line Intervals in Calculus 3. Uh, let's just jump into it. In the last video, we had a theorem uh, where F is a conservative vector field on D, uh, and then F dot dr equals zero for every closed curve on D. And then F dot dr is independent of path from P0 to P1 uh, for every piecewise smooth curve in C. Either all of these are true or all of these are false. And we're going to look at a proof of that now. OK? So we have that theorem there. Uh, again, pause it and write it down again if you need to. Take a look at the proof. <laughs> we did A proves B in the last video. We saw that if it was conservative, we had B of P0 minus P0 equals 0. Uh, Problem or proving C starting with B is a homework problem. It's actually number 38 if you want to take a look at it. So let's do C proves A, which would complete the proof. If we start with one, then we can get any of the other two. So C, we are going to assume path independence, which means the, the path we take from A to B doesn't matter uh, for every piecewise smooth curve on C, curve C in the region D. And to prove A, we need to show that that property, the path independence, implies that F is a conservative vector field. Uh, or it's a gradient in some function phi. So phi of it, uh, the partial of phi with respect to x is the first component of F. F equals F of x, y, g, g of x, y. That's what we're wanting to prove. Uh, so d phi dx will be f, and d phi dy will be g. Uh, we're going to do a, b has the same proof, uh, just slightly changed. So let's take a look at a's. Uh, so here's my picture. We're going to start with uh, our region d is the big circle. I've got the point x, y with a disk centered around it. This is not centered well. I did my picture kind of bad. And we're going to start at some outside point outside the disk, AB. And we're going to go from AB to XY. And we're going to show that the uh, independence of path implies the conservative vector field. OK? Uh, so we're going to start at AB. We're going to go to point A first. Starting at AB, we go to uh, the variable point. This is anywhere in D, XY. So XY is a variable. X and Y are variables for this point right here. Uh, and so we have phi is going to be the line integral from AB to XY for F dot DR. Uh, and we can choose any path from AB to XY. So what we're going to do is no matter what we do along this path right here, we're going to go from AB to A. Uh, we're going to call that X star. So I'm going to choose a point x star and y, where y is going to have the same y value as our y here. So it makes a horizontal line segment. Uh, so phi of x, y uh, will be, this will be curve one right here. And this will be curve two right there, that horizontal line segment. And we can break up our line integral into two curves, f dot dr for both. Now. We write out the integrals with the with the boundary points in there. For this first curve, a is a value and x star is a value. So when this whole thing is evaluated, there are no x's in it. There's only y's. This will be some function of y. Uh, and since it's not a function of x, when we take the partial derivative with respect to x, this integral is going to go to 0. That's important. We're going to do that on the next page. So again, a is a fixed value. x star is a fixed value here at point a. Uh, so when we integrate it, neither of these are variables. Uh, the only variable in these boundary conditions is y. So this will be some function of y when we're done. Uh, which the partial derivative with respect to x will be zero. 
So let's take a look at our, keep going with our proof. Uh, I rewrite the integral right here. As we said, d phi dx equals zero there. So let's like take a look at d, d dx along curve two. It was a horizontal line. Uh, and I, since x is our variable and I got x star and x in there, I'm gonna use a dummy variable t right now for x. Uh, the same is true for y, but as we, we can see, along C2, dy equals zero. Uh, so I was worried less about it because we're taking the derivative with respect to x. dy equals zero because it's a horizontal line. And so all we end up having is that part right there. d dx from x star comma y to x y of f of t of n y dt. That's our integral right now for d phi dx. Recall from the second part of the fundamental theorem of calculus, this is way back in calc one, when we do d, d dx of some function of t dt going from a to x where the lower limit is a constant, we just get f of x. We're gonna do the same thing here. d phi dx is d dx of a constant with respect to x down here and the variable x up here, f of t comma y dt. This is just going to give us, like we plugged in, replace t with x, we're replacing t with x here. d phi dx equals f of x y. That's something we wanted to prove. d phi dx was f of x y. The other thing to prove is d phi dy is the second component of the force. So for that one, you're gonna do pretty much the same thing. Uh, you're gonna, use, but instead you're gonna use another point right here that is vertically underneath x, y. So it'll have the same x value, but different y values, okay? Uh, we'll use a y value star where it's a fixed value. And we'll repeat the process. Uh, so C1 will not depend on Y and the integral along out because the integral output doesn't have a Y in it, just like the integral output up here didn't have an X in it. Uh, and then that on for the curve two, it's making a vertical line. So DX equals zero there. Uh, And you'll end up getting d phi dy is the derivative with respect to y of the integral from x y star to x y of g of x of t dt. And that'll get us g of x y. That proves the other half of what we wanted. So our force is the derivative or the gradient of some potential function. And end of proof. Uh, next video, we'll do something that's a little bit more usable. We can't do that for everything. So we'll be back for something that's usable. Peace.